Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome into the channel. If you are a lover of books, if you like to read books, then guess what? This video is going to be for you because on today's video, we are going to talk about how you can build a master book database to best track your reading. And we're going to use Airtable as our method of doing that. So if you're an organizational freak like I am, you like to kind of manage and organize all your thoughts and all your reading, then stay tuned for this video. If this is the first time into the channel, then I'm your boy Paul. And on this channel, we take a look at all the books, resources, and tools that are available to help you skill up and improve your life and your business. And one of the best ways that we know that we can skill up and improve our life is by reading books. So hopefully you're a book lover. If you're like me, you kind of get ideas all over the place. You want to throw them all together. You never really know which books to prioritize. And then when you finally do, it's like, how do you keep track of all that? So in my previous video, we discussed that into great detail on how to find books and how to read books that are absolutely not going to waste your time. You can check that out. The link will be in the description. In this video, we're going to execute on that by using Airtable as our way of organizing our thoughts. So some of you may be familiar with Airtable. Um, if you're not familiar with Airtable, it's as a project management productivity tool that a lot of people are familiar with. Um, I have a full tutorial for beginners um, in this channel. I have the link in the description. Um, but you can sign up for a free account. I do have an affiliate link that you can use to sign up, get your free Airtable account. You just go to Airtable.com or just click in the link in the description. It'll take you there. All of the things that I'm using, my entire master book database is done using the resources that are available through the free plan. So it's not going to cost you a penny. So make sure you go ahead and sign up. And if you're looking for more information on how to use Airtable effectively to increase your productivity and organization, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out some other videos on that. So let's talk about our master book database. So there are three things that we need to look at when we're building our database and how I use Airtable to do that. First of all, there is the capture phase. You want to capture the books that you want to read. If you're like me, I'm sure there's different moments where you hear about book recommendations or you get book ideas. You may consume it from some influencers that you're watching, maybe some podcasts, maybe you heard something on a TV program. Wait, a television show? Like, <laughs> is TV even a thing anymore these days? Or maybe it's something that you streamed. There you go, something that you streamed. Or there's different times that you're going to receive information and get a book recommendation. So you wanna make sure you capture that right away. The, what, what I wanna capture is very important for me to capture is a couple of things. And let's go ahead and take a look at my Airtable database and we'll go over those three different things. So in the capture phase, you wanna capture the book title. So obviously what the title of the book is, um, if you have the author of the book, it's very important to try to capture that just in case there's books by, you know, with similar titles by different authors. Um, you want to capture how you found out about it. So how did you find out about the book? It's very important that you know who recommended it or where you found out because later on, if you're second guessing yourself or you're having thoughts about, you know, what did I, why did I want to read this book? What? Who introduced me to it? You can go back, you'll be able to know where you found out about it, maybe retrace your steps. If it's a podcast or a YouTube video, you can go back and watch it to see what sparked your curiosity to put that book on your list. The next thing that you wanna make sure that you capture topic and the interest, right? What types of interest is this going to appeal to you in? Because we are all multi-dimensional people. We all have different interests, different things that we're curious or excited about. And so you wanna make sure that you categorize your books by those different interest levels. So you could you know, categorize your interests differently. Um, you know, For me, I have things that interest me would either be things like uh, leadership, blockchain, AI and technology, there's creative uh, process, politics, management, music, philosophy, entrepreneurship, different things. So what type of interest does this feed into? Right. So as a pro tip, what you want to capture, if you can, is a link to purchase the book. If you happen to be on Amazon or somewhere or somebody shares a, a link or an affiliate link or referral link, make sure you capture that and put this into your database. So when it comes time for you to purchase it or to buy it, you'll have it right there. You don't have to go back and retrace your steps, but it's all nice and easy for you. And if you're going to get a discount, why not go ahead and get a discount? There's no discounts if you use my affiliate link, but you do help your boy out by allowing me to get a small commission in that without you paying anything extra. So keep that in mind. Capture those links. You can put them right into your Airtable database. And another thing that I do like to capture if I can, if I'm in there and I'm looking at 
uh, Amazon, for, for example, I do like to grab the book covers um, because that helps me get a better visual of the book and it just helps my layout better so you can see I, I can go into my gallery and there's all the book covers there. It gives me a nice quick snapshot of the books that I read or if I want to just go my what to read gallery, it'll show me here. It's just a nice visual guys. Again, it's not necessary. It's just an extra pro, uh, pro tip if you want to go ahead and adopt that. So that's it for the capture phase, guys. The next phase is going to be the curate phase. And this is a phase where we talk about how you can actually build the list of books that you're currently reading or books to read next and make sure that it's nice and diverse and interesting and it allows you room to grow and build in the long run. And the best way to do that is by, number one, the type of interest it's going to appeal to and you want to develop a list as to which method is best for capturing that information or for reading that book, so to speak. So by that, I mean the different um, types of methods is either going to be through audio or by digital or by physical books. So there are certain books that I just like to hold that I like to read. Something like maybe the Bible is a book that I like to hold and I like to read to page back and forth to. There's a lot of books that I like to absorb through the digital channels, like through my Kindle, because number one is very convenient. I can take it wherever I want to go. It's very portable for me. Um, it's a way that I could really interact and take notes, highlight and capture it um, that and get, you know, and capture it that way, which is the next part of the, the, the video. And then there's the audio books and the books that I like to just think, um, you know, while I'm walking or just in the day where I'm making some coffee, just things I like to listen to. Those are typically like biographies or things about politics, maybe personal finances, maybe just certain interesting stories that I like to capture. So those are ways that I like to absorb those. So you want to, Mark, is it, does it make sense for you to listen to it on audio? Does it make sense for you to do it digitally? Or does it make sense for you to actually have a physical copy of the book, understanding that each of those has their own pros and cons? That could be a topic for another video. If that's a video you want me to, to touch on, we can dive into that. Subscribe to this channel, guys. We'll get into that at some other point. So you want to curate a list of books that are going to be diverse and that are going to speak to your different interests. Because let's face it, you can't read books about the same thing all day long. It would just be boring. And at some point in time, you're gonna reach the point of saturation where you learned everything that you can, and then you're bored, and then you don't wanna read anymore. So you wanna have different books with different interests. So depending on where your interest lies, what your day is, how you're feeling, maybe you're looking for something to spark some creativity, maybe you want some new ideas on entrepreneurship, maybe you want to expand you know, your philosophy on life, maybe you need some self-motivation today, you're feeling down, you had a little beef with the loved one or whatever. Uh, so different books are going to appeal to different interests. Make sure that you do have a wide variety of interests and books that appeal to those interests. In your Airtable database, you want to make sure that you mark the topic and the interest, right? And that way, when you go in there, there's different ways that you can, you can classify it. You can go ahead and you can group these by interest if you want to group those. So you group it by a field. Let's just say we want to group it by interest. And then it'll list your different books by interest here, right? So, hey, there's books. Here's about blockchain. This is the AI and technology books. Here's the leadership book. Here's the books on creativity, music, politics, philosophy. You get the point, right? You could group them by different interests. Or you could do a Kanban board like I did, which will have different statuses. Let's do the Kanban board by interest, right? So here you go. These are the different interests that I have blockchain, AI and technology, leadership. So you can see for me, it helps to when I detect to capture the actual cover of the book. That way I have that information and there you go. So you can see it's also listed in a Kanban board. So there's different ways and Airtable will allow you to do different ways. You can see here, there's also a gallery um, that you can do, All right? So if you go in here and you do a gallery view, this is gonna list all the books in a gallery view for you. So. Hey, the world is your oyster here on, on how you want that information portrayed. We all kind of take things in differently. Now for the third part of this, you want to have a way to, for you to be able to contribute to what you read 
Um, because let's face it, we're not just reading just for the sake of reading because there's nothing better to do. No, we're reading because we want to learn things, we want to build our knowledge, we want to be able to share that, have conversations with people about it. And the best way that you can do that is by taking notes and engaging with the material, right? So you want to be able to contribute your notes and your thoughts and put them on page so you can go back to them and reference them later. Now, the way that I do that, I adopted a system that I found out from one of our fellow colleagues, a fellow YouTuber, his name is Ali Abdul and you'll see that I talk about him a lot because I'm, hey, I'm a fanboy of Ali. What can I tell you? Um, but Ali has a, a great method on n his note-taking for books. And so what I use is I adopted that and I put it into my Airtable database. So let's go back to my Airtable. We can see um, how I contribute to the books that I read. So we already talked about capturing the initial information, right? We wanted to get the book title, how we found out about it, the topic, the interest, and, and kind of an idea of what it's about. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to be able to start building on that and contribute to it. So you can go and you can do it here uh, in this, this view like this, but I like to go into each particular record and start taking my notes. So the first thing that I like to add is how the book changed me. After I read this book, what, what have I learned? What changed me? What actions am I taking? How has it improved my life? How has it made a difference to me? Make it personal to yourself. That way it's something that you could remember later. And then um, the book in three sentences, just as a quick way for us to summarize the book, kind of organize your thoughts in a succinct pattern, um, what your impressions were, how you felt about it. Like there's some books that you're really excited about to get started, but then when you read it, you realize it's not really what you thought, or maybe it took you down a different path you didn't expect. So kind of what your impressions were on that. Um, who should read the book? Obviously, if you're going to recommend it or share it with other people, you want to know who is the audience for this book. Is it somebody that's a college student? Is it somebody that's a professional? Is it somebody that needs help with finance? Who should actually read this book that you might want to recommend it to? And then I have a section for summary and notes. This is a more formal way of me kind of giving a summary of each chapter. This is a quick reference if I want to go back and rehash on something later that I learned. This is a quick reference for me to take a look at it. And then my top three quotes. The top three quotes for me is just really fun and I love that Ali put this in his 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 uh, his template because the, the quotes are very powerful for me. I do use Notion um, to organize my day. I have my dashboard there. I like to take some quotes in there and put it in there so every day when I open my dashboard there may be a different quote depending on how I'm feeling. Maybe I need a little encouragement that day. Maybe I need a little creativity spark. Maybe I need to remind myself of something or I'm feeling down or maybe I'm feeling extremely good and I want to be thankful. So I take quotes and I put it in there. One way of capturing all these quotes is through Readwise. And guys, if you don't have a Readwise subscription, make sure you download that because if you're taking notes digitally, a great way to capture all of those is through Readwise. And that is a whole different video, guys. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then, that, you know, that's about it. I do like to have a way for me to, you know, um, contribute my thoughts on the rating. So I do have a little rating system I put in here. Um, that you'll see there. So you make sure that you contribute to it because as you contribute, then it's going to add value to your life and give you a, a resource for you to go back and look at it, reread your notes and maybe gain some new experience or revisit things a couple of months, a couple of years down the road, you may learn something new because you're in a different place in your life and you're susceptible to learning new things at that time. So very important to make sure you contribute to your reading and, and your learning. So you can see that Airtable does give you a lot of options. Guys, you could build this out any way that you want. Obviously, it doesn't have to be exactly what I'm doing, but these are some tips that help me curate my list and keep me on track. It helps keep me focused. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you want to follow me on my journey, there's two ways you can do that. Make sure that you go onto my website, paulmelikivi.com. On my website, you will see everything that I'm learning, all the books that I'm reading, all the links to purchase those books, um, all the courses I'm taking, the links to those courses. Or you can also subscribe to my weekly newsletter. It's called Paul's Weekly Insights. That's an opportunity for you to share in all my thoughts, failures, successes. You know, just share all of my insights on my journey along the way. And there's a simple way for me to communicate that with you on a weekly basis by sending you a simple email to your inbox. 
every week. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you're looking for all the books, tools, and resources that are going to help you skill up and improve your life, make sure you stay tuned to this channel. It's been a pleasure talking this out with you guys. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have a better system or if you want to see me explain how to recreate the same thing in Notion. As always, I'm your boy, Paul. Thank you for tuning in, and I'm going to see you along the journey. Take care, guys.